Tonight, me and my team of specialists are here in the darkness, and we're going to be looking for one of the most cunning species of North America. Lumbricus terrestris is the Latin name for what we commonly know as the earthworm. Now, the earthworm, we're going to learn a few things about its cunning and deceiving ways tonight, because lots of people have been fooled into thinking that this is a harmless creature, which won't do us any harm at all. But tonight we'll find out the truth about this devious specimen which we have here. So we have to find the natural habitat of the earthworm. They only like to live in very specialized localities, these ones. So we have to find out exactly where these are. And it's not really all that easy necessarily to find these places because Lots of other people, earthworm hunters, have probably been there before. And just through the subtle vibrations of their footsteps, all of the worms have disappeared back into their mysterious system of intertwining caves which is under the earth. Zoom in on it, mate. Zoom in. Get a close-up. When, when we're touching them, watch, watch, watch that. Look at how he's jumping at me. Holy mate, mate, I really like, like, that's a huge one. Just look at the size of this prodigious beast we've got here. It's almost the size of my, my pointy finger. That's amazing. Look at the vividness of it. The, the way it moves with such ferocity. It's almost like it's about ready to just strike out at us. It could at any moment. And that's the thing, when you're trying to catch an earthworm, you have to really find, first you have to find its head. And you've got to sneak up on it from behind. Otherwise, it might it might come around. It'll swing around. It'll wrap itself around your finger. And it could constrict the life out of your finger. Like, be careful, mate. Like, I mean, you might think that your camera's far enough away that you won't get hurt. But, well, look at that. Look at that. He tried to turn around and bite me. Blimey. These creatures, I tell you. Watch this. Watch out, I got it. You got to keep the head down because that's where its center of balance is. Look at the way he's stretching out. Holy He just tried to slime me. Did you see that? What just what just dropped out of his anus right there? That was incredible. The amount of slime in this creature. Like an earthworm, it can produce a, an amount of slime which is equivalent to 30% of its body weight. To catch an earthworm is you've got to sneak up on it. Now He'll see you as soon as you approach his his lair right there. He'll know. He'll get wind of you. So the secret is to be really fast. You've got to pounce on it. Oh, mate. No. Got to ease it out of the ground. They really stick in there. They stick in there hard. Imagine the massive force that these earthworms can generate when they're, they're pulling themselves contracting every muscle in their tiny little bodies trying to dart back into their lair and under the earth. An earthworm's lair can descend up to up to five meters below the ground. It's a whole network of secret passageways intertwining amongst themselves. And you've got to imagine a family of earthworms. There could be a hundred earthworms for every one that you see above the surface of the ground. So it's just, just amazing like how many of them there actually are. If we get a chance later on I will actually descend into an earthworm's lair with my pinky finger and we'll see just what is going on down there. This would be very dangerous. Do not try this under any circumstances on your own. We don't make any sound and we don't get seen by it. Because these creatures, they're highly sensitive to almost all motion and any, any slight subtle vibrations. Mate! Oh, mate! 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 Don't do this to me! Oh, we've got him. We've got you, mate. We've got you. Settle down, mate. Settle down. That's it. You know. Take it easy, mate. Take it easy. Give it a breather. Ah, oh, mate. Mate, I'm going to have to be forceful with you. All right, we've got him. we got him, mate. Now we're going to just take him back. We're going to put him in the bucket with the other ones. Now, it could happen that if you get enough night crawlers in the same bucket, they might start to conspire amongst themselves against you. They might try to try and plan some way to escape. Like one le no lonely night crawler in here, there's no way he'll ever get out of the bucket. But as soon as you've got three or more, they could 
somehow, you know, like they, they, they climb onto each other, they could climb over the side of this bucket and they might even escape. And that could be very dangerous for us, us people standing down here. There's one right there. That's a ripe one. This is a dirty bastard we got here. Look at that one. Throw him in the pot with the rest of them. The reason we come out here at night is because earthworm, it's a nocturnal creature. And that means that it only comes out at night. These sly creatures, they aren't to be seen during the day. They don't like to show their faces in the light of day. Because they're sly ones, you know. They like to sneak around in the shadows of the night. That's the way these, these creatures work. That's, that's what we have to understand about them. They're sly, they're cunning. They know how to hide, how to evade, how to not be pursued. These are very invasive creatures. They don't belong in our landscape here. They came in, they were brought by some European settlers who somehow accidentally traveled with them on their boots. Cause these sly little earthworms, during the night, they somehow snuck into the boots of these Europeans. And these Europeans unwittingly brought this invasive species into our great North American landscape. And that's how they got here in the first place. So these are sly, wily ones. We can't trust these ones, I tell you. <gasps> oh, mate, look at that. Did you see that? He almost just jumped out and bit me. So we're right next to a watered area. You might be able to hear the river in the background. So that means that these earthworms, which really like the humidity, they thrive off of even small amounts of water. As long as dew is condensing on the grass, that's a good sign that the earthworm will probably be there one right on top of the ground, all of its natural defenses are left completely barren. So all we've got to do is pick this one up, as it seems. Look, that's a fat one there. It's a really fat one. And oh, mate, oh no, did you see that? It's trying to constrict my finger. Look at that. Oh, if we can't pry this thing loose, like quick, like my finger is in mortal danger. These are really fierce beasts. If they, if they can get around your finger, they have all the control. They can just wrap right around there. It constricts the blood flow to your finger. You've got to cut them off immediately. Meanwhile, they've got this poisonous slime that oozes force from their skin. That can just like go straight through into your finger. And your finger will swell up like the size of a baseball. It's incredible, mate. Like, these are dangerous, dangerous and nasty creatures. Very careful with earthworms. My name is Fox Wilson, and it's been my pleasure hosting tonight's edition of The Worm Hunter. We've already collected lots of evidence on these mysterious creatures, and we hope in the next show to find out even more. So join us on the next edition of The Worm Hunter. Who knows what we might find?